So when I did the contest for the free lesson, most people when they listed in the comments what subject they would pick for a lesson, tapping was the overwhelming favorite. So since not everybody could win, I figured I'd just do an extended tapping lesson that would cover everything starting from technique to building blocks to two full sequences so everybody kind of gets something and it seems like that was a popular topic. So that's what we're going to cover from the ground up, basic technique, how to move up and down the neck fluidly, uh, and we're going to do two different examples that will have tab in the description below so you can study it on your own. One's going to be a single string idea and the other's going to use two different strings. So with that being said, let's get started. Now there's, as far as the right hand goes, which the left hand isn't going to be that different from your normal fretting, as far as your right hand though, bringing it onto the fingerboard, I see a lot of guys who use their index finger as their trilling finger. Uh, I advise against it. Um, it's the weaker of the fingers you could pick as your central one. It's the furthest back out of the three most useful. And it also pushes your whole hand behind this, almost using it as a, a capo in a strange way. And for me, it also feels like a lot of times it's harder to control the amount of noise. Which finger do I use? Of course. <laughs> All joking aside, it's the one that extends the furthest. It has more density. It's easier to get a solid hit out of it. It's got more volume and more push behind it. It also is able to get fluid movement a lot faster. You can feel it just by doing those two. This one just has more dexterity. And another advantage to it is if you're positioning your hand correctly like this, is that if you're tapping in the middle of the fingerboard, you've got one finger up and one finger below to hit adjacent notes as you're moving. Whereas with this one, you don't really have that. So this is the one we want to use. And the way you want to lock down your hand is get your hand right on the side of it and use it almost like a guide rail to move up and down the neck. So it should move fluid up and down the neck. Now, Let's start with our first building block with that out of the way. The first thing we're going to do is start with a basic closed position trill. And what I mean by closed position is any time that you're tapping and most of the notes are within reach of your other hand instead of, you know, a long extension, something where they may even be hitting the same fret. So we're going to start with a whole step idea, being the fifth and seventh here. And we're just going to start by tapping on with this one, pull off. Tapping on with this one, pull off, back and forth. Simple idea, and you know, stick with me if you're a little more experienced on tapping and you know, this is rudimentary, but we want to get everything nailed down, building it up. So that's going to be your basic function. If you're new to this or you haven't worked with that kind of closed hand thing, just work on that for a while and get it solid. It's got a cool buzzing effect. You can hear Billy Sheehan, guys like that, use it all over the place. Uh, check out like Elephant Gun from David Lee Roth or something. It's all over there. Now, the first extension of that we're going to do is we're going to have a piece like this. We're going to use a minor pattern, whole step and a half step. And what we're going to do is alternate using our middle finger or our plucking finger back and forth in between the second and third note. So that's going to work like this. Pull off, pull off. Now hold this one down. Don't pull off right away. Tap down on the third note, then pull with that and then pull with this one. So you get Bringing that up to speed, it's going to basically be this one kind of just pulling on and off and this one kind of dancing back and forth in between the two. So you get... Again, something you'll hear Steve Vai, Billy Sheehan, all those guys do. Now, what we're going to do is use this as not just a blurry type of cool pattern, but we're going to see how we can use it to fly up and down the neck uninterrupted. So let's extend our pattern and we're going to do it in two positions. Since we just did this one, we're going to extend that to here. You can see these two notes are the same. So we're adding in this note. 
what we're going to do and the way we're going to be able to move between those two positions is like this. We'll do our sequence. Now we're going to tap with this one. And while this is being held down, you're going to use that to bring this finger up behind it. So you get... Same sequence, but you've used that moment to shift forward, so you get... Real simple idea, but it has a cool effect. It moves and has this blurring rotational pattern in it. So just try working with that and take it slow. Trust me, trying to do this too fast right away just it's going to train wreck and you're not going to be as clean as you should be. Just Real simple. And you can get a quick blur out of it. Now our first lick is going to be based out of this idea and we're going to use it to go from this end of the neck all the way up to here. Okay? So we're just going to keep extending that in three note blocks until we get to where we want to go. So the first one is going to be starting on the second fret of the top string, your G string, if you're a four string player. Minor pattern, and then we're going to go to this one that we just did. Okay, now we're going to add in two straight whole steps. So you're going to go two, four, and five, four, five, and seven, five, seven, and nine. So it's going to look like this. Okay. Now, it's going to be easy to knock in the next one because we're going to go back to this beginning one. And that's going to be here. Seven, or sorry, seven, nine, and ten. So we get... Last one we're going to do is a duplicate again of this one and this one. So since we're back here, 9, 10, and 12. So we're going to get... Okay, one more time all together. So basically what we're doing is playing those same three in a row twice over. Once you hit this piece, you go back to start. Okay? So our full sequence going through is also going to involve a little bit of open tapping at the end. Let's get the first part down. We're going to do this beginning one a total of five times. You're going to go... in some open tapping and we're just going to go pulling off of this one and moving this finger forward okay so let's play it up to speed add some drums in and see what we got Now that we got one idea under our belt, let's shoot for another one, move across multiple strings, and see how you can take the simple ideas that we're working with and expand them out a little further. So we're going to start with kind of a repeat of what we did in the first riff, but we're going to start on it on the second fret of the D string. So we're going to do this. Okay. The difference is, and how we're going to expand it, is we're going to do the same figure on the G again by barring with our first finger across these two strings and doing them one after another. So you get... Okay? So 
So again, same sequence. So it's a cool way just to move it across two strings. You bar holding it down and you can do that same sequence back and forth in both positions. Now, principally we're going to do what we did in the first riff, which is move it up in three block or three note sections, and we're going to do the same scale that we were doing before, so it's going to look like this. This is where it's going to get a little different, is because it's not going to be the same on both strings. When you get to the seventh fret, seven, nine, ten, then on here you're going to have seven, nine, eleven. Okay? So that's going to be our sequence using that kind of flutter technique up to there. We're going to add in some other types of tapping here in a minute, but starting from here. So now once we get to the ninth fret, we're going to change our fingering and it's going to be hammering on and off a 9 and 10 and then 9 and 11 while tapping on the 12th fret at each string. So you're going to get... So after we have that piece, we're going to move it up to the 14th fret and go. Okay. Then the last piece of this is, we're going to do something we haven't done yet, which is using the open string and doing some hammer and pull offs. So we're going to go on the 4th fret. So you get... So on this, the last note, you're just hitting open. You're not actually fretting anything, so... So 7-9. Staying on the 14th fret, 7-9 again. 5 and 7. 5 and 7 again. Staying on the 14th fret all the way across, then open, so... So, let's put all this together, add some drums, and get it up to speed. Okay, so... A couple ideas to put this further into your playing and get the most out of it is not just to use it as a flashy technique or something. Try and use it in fills that you listen to the drummer, really try and hear where he's going with something and see if that doesn't give you an idea on how to tap and use it just as a turnaround or a place in your fills. The other and bigger challenge will be take some of these ideas and try and make grooves out of them. Make it an actual bass line. You'll get way more use out of it. So for lesson number one on tapping, that's going to wrap it up, but I have a challenge for you guys. I would love to see you guys video yourselves, talk about what any issues you have, ideas you come up with, anything like that. And if you learn the licks, link to the video below. Share it. Uh, let's talk about them. I'd love to see that some of you guys actually got something out of it and actually learned the pieces. And even more, if you come up with other ideas or if you expand on this stuff and it inspires you to create something, I'd love to see it. Definitely post it below. Don't worry about posting videos and links and that type of stuff. If it get caught in the spam filter or something, I'll make sure it gets pulled out and approve it so that everybody can see it. Talk about it. Let me know ideas you have or things that you've gotten out of it or places that you've been able to take these techniques. I'd really love to see it. Uh, I hope this stuff is helping you out and that this covers a lot of what people requested since tapping was the number one subject. I'm going to work on some other things and some other forms of tapping, things you may have seen in my other videos and stuff. If you have a specific style, 
comment below. Let me know. Say, hey, I'd like to see something about how you did this or that or that kind of thing, and maybe I'll get it all down. Again, tabs below. So no reason not to sit down, get this stuff under your fingers, and uh, get to shredding. So thanks as always for watching. Like, share, subscribe. It really does help out. Much appreciated. I'll see you on the next one.